This is a short video about 6.2 in Stein's Elementary Number Theory book. And we are looking at the group structure on an elliptic curve. So if you haven't seen it already, I did a little intro to what elliptic curves are. Um, and remember that we are considering these curves over different fields, like maybe the rational numbers, or eventually maybe over like a finite field like z mod pz. So uh, where are we though? So E is going to represent the curve, and we're told that it's over a field K. And uh, the curve is given by this equation y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. And what we're going to do is try to define a binary operation called plus, so it should look like addition, on this set ek. And just to remind you of a few things here, to talk about an elliptic curve e, you need to make clear a couple things. The first thing you need to make clear is what is its equation, so you need to tell them y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. It's really the only things that change there curve to curve are what a and b are. And the other thing though is uh, over what field are you considering this curve? So where do a and b come from? Are they allowed to be any rational number? Do they live in like z mod 5z? And then what that also tells me is uh, what are the points x comma y that you're considering as being on the graph? In other words, being solutions to this equation. And so those come from k as well. Now there's one more piece of, uh, there's one more symbol over here that uh, is, should be familiar from the previous video. E parentheses K, that's talking about the elliptic curve with, equa with this equation, y squared equals x cubed, blah, 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 over the particular field K. Like that's the symbol that you use to impart one and two to somebody. Um, but then we'll call that though the K rational points on E. And what is that? Remember it's the union of two things. The first thing is just take all the coordinates x comma y from K cross K that satisfy the equation for E. And then the other thing we do is we throw in this weird point in infinity, which I kind of showed you the symbol for in the previous video, but we really haven't said much about. And we'll say a little bit more about it right now, or, or, or going forward, I mean. So what we want to do again is try to define some way to add points on the curve E. In other words, we're going to make a group out of this set EK. And so how to do that is on the next page here in Stein's book, we're going to look at algorithm 6.2.1. So this is what you should use to add points on EK. And this is what you should use when you're like, you know, asked to do something by hand in a number theory class about how to add points. And I'll also show you how to do this in Sage. Sage has, um, has this stuff kind of built in already. But let's go through it. So if you're given two points, P1 and P2, that are in EK, this algorithm is going to compute the third point. Denotes the third point by R, but just remember R stands for P1 plus P2. And we want that to also be a point that's on this on this elliptic curves graph. So uh, the first one here, it asks, is one of the P's equal to the point in infinity? And remember the point in infinity, all it's supposed to be for us, like you shouldn't be able to picture it. Don't feel like you need to be able to picture it. For us, we're just gonna think of it like the additive identity. And just to make that uh, a little more grounded, you know, the integers have an additive identity that's called zero. And all I mean by that is if I took any integer X and added zero to it, I get X back. So that's what this fancy O is gonna represent. And all number one says here is is that P plus O should be equal to P for every P in on the curve, EK. So again, that's an equation that says that O is the additive identity. Uh, and then number two here, what does it say? Uh, if you have two negatives of each other, so you have two points, P, P1 and P2, but notice that Y1 is equal to minus Y2. So like they're like vertical, they're, they're, they're on the same vertical line. That's what we mean by negatives of each other. Uh, then when you add them together, you should get the point in infinity. So in other words, that says P plus minus P should give you O for all P and EK. Now number three and four together, they, those tell us what is the actual rule that you do to add P and Q whenever P is not P and Q, neither one is the point in infinity, so that's number one there, and two, P and Q are both not inverses of each other, so they don't fall into categories one and two here in the algorithm. And just to look a little bit here, what's going on, I hope that you notice, lambda, if you look at maybe the bottom expression for lambda, what do I mean by bottom expression, it's kind of a busy page, bottom expression here, that's the slope of the line between P1 and P2. So that's what we're gonna denote by lambda. And what you can see is that now you've actually got a formula here for how do you get the first coordinate of P1 plus P2 and how do you get the second coordinate of P1 plus P2. And it tells you down here that, well, lambda is the slope of the line between them, uh, in that case that they're not equal, uh, in the case that P1 is not equal to P2, sorry. So lambda is just that slope. And then here, X3, I need to know what X3 is. X3 is this, which is really just the first coordinate of the point here. So that shows up there. Finally, this new, new is supposed to be y1 minus lambda times uh, x1 here. And so what I wanna do is uh, 
the next result, we're not gonna prove it, but this turns out to be a bin opera binary operation that makes, makes a group out of EK. We're not gonna prove it because it's kind of hard to do, uh, but then what I wanna do is illustrate, how do you use this algorithm? How do you use it to add points? And just to go a little bit further into the paragraph below, this looks very complicated, like steps three and four, where does all that stuff come from? In some cases, it's kind of a nice, there's a nice geometric interpretation. And so this is what I wanna focus on for the algorithm above. So how do you contain, how do you obtain P1 plus P2? You figure out the equation of the line that connects P1 and P2. That's gonna intersect your elliptic curve in a third point, call it P3. So P3 is the third point of intersection where the line between P1 and P2 hit E. And then what you do is you just reflect that third point of intersection over the X axis. And it's very subtle, like there's this weird reflection at the end. Why on earth do we do that? It seems like a weird game that some mathematician came up with. And it turns out though, that we need to reflect in order to make sure that this plus operation is actually associative. And remember, associative is a, is a requirement for, some, for a, a binary operation, binary operation, excuse me, to be a group law. So this reflecting is very important, but it's very subtle as to why you need it. So if it seems a little goofy or wonky, it should, but I'm telling you that it's, it's super duper important to make all this work out. So what we will do is we will skip down to uh, some of this sage work here, and we're gonna plot the curve y squared equals x cubed minus 5x plus 4. And what we want to do is add the points 1, 0, plus 0, 2. And just for fun, we'll also look at what's p plus p. So how do you add a point to itself? Now, uh, if I scroll down to some of the sage work here, um, the point at infinity O, sage is going to represent that by 0, colon 1, colon 0. And I've underlined that 0 there. Every other point besides the point at infinity is gonna have a one for that coordinate. So there's only gonna be two choices for that coordinate, a zero or a one. And I'm telling you the only time it'll be zero is when it's this specific point, zero colon one colon zero. Now, if I look over to the left side here, um, how do we tell Sage that I wanna think about this point on this elliptic curve? That is where we're going to define what the curve is, and that's like in the previous video. But the new thing is, I wanna tell Sage about the point P is one zero. You say P is equal to E parentheses bracket one comma zero, and then end the bracket and end the parentheses. So this is how you're telling Sage that you're going to look at this element of this group. Similarly with Q. So again, we need to define the element of this group. But now once you've done this, you can just tell Sage to compute P plus Q and it'll spit out my number three colon one colon four. Now Sage again has that one there in that last coordinate and it's just distinguishing kind of the points that are in this much of EK versus the point that's in this much of EK. So in other words, everybody over here, Sage is gonna represent by X colon Y colon one, and then this one is just represented by zero colon one colon zero. So that's the distinction between the two. Hope that makes a little bit more sense. So if I scroll back down, I think uh, I just made a few more notes about where, um, Again, just pointing to there's a one in that coordinate. And then when you do P plus P, you see that you get the point at infinity back right here. And then Sage can, you could tell it to add P plus Q plus itself or times itself four times, or sorry, P plus Q added to itself four times, I guess is a better way to say that. And Sage just can, can do all that good stuff. And so if I scroll down a little bit, here's a picture though of actually what's going on to demonstrate that group law here. So there's P and there's Q. And remember like, what's the idea for how do you do P plus Q? Well, you find the third point of intersection of the line between P and Q with the rest of the elliptic curve. So that's where the black line hits the green. And then now to figure out what P plus Q is, remember you just reflect this point over the X axis and that's how we obtain P plus Q. So that's three comma four there. Now I'm going to uh, skip over the rest of this and just do one more example with you by hand and then maybe we'll look at a little bit of sage for this example. So let's say E is the curve defined by Y squared equals X cubed plus X minus one over the rationals. And let's take P to be one, one and Q to be two, three. And so what we're going to do is uh, I wanna know what P plus Q is. I should have said that those are the instructions for this example, but we aim to find what is P plus Q. And so following the previous idea, I need to know what's the equation of a line between P and Q, and that's such a nice little college algebra problem. You should get Y equals two X minus one. So again, find the slope and plug it into like slope intercept or point slope, whatever you like. 
And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that and substitute that y into the equation for e. And so I've colored them both green to try to suggest that, oh, I'm gonna put two x minus one up there where that y is. And I'm going to uh, foil all that out. I get this pretty nasty cubic polynomial. I was very pleased with myself because I made up this example really just kind of off the top of my head. And it worked out to be a cubic that factored. Like how often can a teacher say that an example they made up actually worked out pretty nicely. So uh, anyway though, this thing factors as x minus one squared times x minus two. So what does that tell me? That says the point one comma one, it has multiplicity two, right? Remember that's that exponent up here? So like it's a solution twice. And uh, what else does it tell me? Well, what's the third point of intersection between the line between P and Q and E? Well, that tells me that the line, we're gonna think of it as hitting the point one comma one one more time. So one comma one is the third point of intersection uh, of the line through P and Q with E. Now what we do is take one comma one and reflect it over the x-axis to obtain uh, P plus Q would be one comma minus one. All right, so I wanted to come over to Sage and just show that this computation works and also how you put it in. So in uh, line one here, I'm telling Sage that here's my elliptic curve. And remember, A is 1 and B is negative 1. And um, what else? If you don't put anything else in there, it's assuming that you're working over the rational numbers. And I'm going to make this object e, e plot, which is just the graph of my elliptic curve. What I'm going to do is add some things to it, too. So uh, in line 3, I want the points 1, 1, and 2, 3 to stand out. So I'll put them in this list called points. In line four, what I end up doing is uh, I'm going to also tack on the graph of the line between my two points, one, one, and two, three. And remember, that's the graph of two x minus one. This uh, in the middle, you see this this business x comma zero comma two point five. That just controls my uh, my interval, like what x values am I considering, and I colored it. And what I'm going to do is, uh, by the way, this plus equals, that's going to add the following to e plot. So this is telling it to add, add this plot blah 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 to e plot already. Same thing here. I'm going to add the following. So this command list plot will take my points, 1, 1, and 2, 3 above, and uh, it's going to throw them in the plot. And I can change the color and how thick the points are too and how big they are. And then what I've done below as well is I'm going to take P and Q and define them as elements of EK, right? So I'm telling Sage, okay, think of those two points as being in the group now so that Sage can tell me what P plus Q should be. And at the end of the day, what I'm going to do is uh, I want to throw those on. I want to throw the point, which I know it should be one negative one from the work that we did. Uh, I want to throw that on there to make it show up. And then I'll do E dot show in order to make it all work. And so let us run it, cross our fingers, and I get, okay, well, I get P plus Q. Oh, E plot dot show, my bad. E plot dot show. Let's try that. All right, and it's happy, cool. So the first thing it outputted was uh, 1, negative 1, which matches the computation that we got. And remember, that last coordinate just says that that's, it's not a point at infinity. It's not that one point at infinity. And just in my picture here, you notice that uh, when you add the two top points together, and we, from our work, we know that the third point of intersection with the multiplicity business just took me back to 1, comma 1. And then now I reflect just to get down to 1, comma negative 1.